any questions on that part? If you type uh, partial dominance <coughs> or um, co-dominance. All right, so the next thing is it talks about uh, the sex-linked genes. So since we have different chromosomes, males and females have different chromosomes, so those chromosomes determine the maleness or femaleness. So Y chromosome determines the maleness. If that Y chromosome is present in the zygote, that results into a male child. So, and if Y chromosome is missing, Y chromosome is a very small chromosome. So the comparison is that this is X chromosome, Y chromosome is very small. The only gene that is present on Y chromosome is the one that determines the maleness, that makes the baby's male. So females have two X chromosomes, and males have one X chromosome and one Y chromosome. So the gametes, the eggs that mothers produce, they, they have only X chromosomes in them because they, they are not made of Y chromosomes, so there is no X chromosome, there is no Y chromosome that comes from the mother's side. Fathers have one X chromosome and one Y chromosome, so when gametes are made from fathers, they make two different kinds of gametes. They make a, a gamete or sperm cell that have X chromosomes, and they make other, chromosomes, other sperm cells that have Y chromosomes in them. So mothers can make only X type of uh, egg cells only. They, when they, they ovulate, they ovulate in this type of gametes. That, and all of them are of X kind. They have only X chromosome in them. They don't have any Y chromosome. Because at the time of gamete formation, the two homologous chromosomes, they split from each other. So this also gives us the idea to see how boys and girls are produced. So there is 50-50 uh, chance of both males and females. At each uh, conception, at each fertilization, there is a 50% chance of male or female. And that is based on whatever actually gets, uh, whatever gets fertilized. If, X chrom if uh, a sperm that carries X chromosome fertilizes you know, the X cell, then, because all X cells are the same kind, so if X cell, if a sperm that carries X chromosome uh, fertilizes the X cell that results into a girl because the combination is X and X, one X comes from, from the father's side, one X com comes from the mother's side, so it can result only into a girl. So the, 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 the sex of the, the baby will be girl. When the sperm that carry Y chromosome fertilize these eggs, then it will produce only a boy. So the sex of the child will be uh, only XY, which will be uh, male. And so, and, and so that is a 50% 50 per, 50 chance. That does not mean that the, the first child will be male or it will be female and second has to be male or, uh, or different. It is just probability. It could be that you know, uh, this couple has four children and all of them are girls or they can have you know, four children and all of them are male. This is what you see practically. So in my case, we are four siblings. We are two brothers and two sisters. So the chance is 50-50, which is you know, what is the theoretical chance. But in, in other cases, uh, like my, my aunt has four children and all four of them are boys. Actually, I have another aunt that has uh, four children and, and she has only girls. So, you know, again, this is not, that is not 50-50, that is just, and so this is just a probability. That does not mean the nature will follow this whatever we have determined from our own studies and from our own experiments. So this is how actually uh, the determination of male and female takes place. Um, and that also is linked to the diseases. Because X chromosome <coughs> is very long chromosome, and it has actually several different diseases that are carried on X chromosome. So a lot of times, mothers actually give those conditions, genetic conditions or diseases, to their uh, to their sons, because uh, most of the time, what is contributed to the boys is X chromosome that comes from the mother's side. You know, fathers, you know, in case of a son. The X chromosome comes from the mother's side because father's 
sperm has only Y chromosome. So that all the diseases that are carried on X chromosomes can, can only be contributed by the, by the X chromosome that comes from the mother's side. So, and there are many different genes. For example, these genes, these different genetic conditions um, are contributed from the mother's side most of the time. Like muscular dystrophy, one type of muscular dystrophy, or hemophilia, red-green color blindness, um, and many other genes too. Uh, some of the conditions of the retina and, and, and blind, uh, sorry, this uh, baldness. Um, the parent baldness is also a disease which is carried on X chromosome. That comes also from the mother's side. So the genes that I inherited from my mother that made me bald are carried on the X chromosome of my mother because my father gave me Y chromosome that made me male. Uh, but the, uh, the, you know, um, the baldness comes from the mother's side because this is carried on her gene. So most likely I got a gene which is kind of a recessive gene uh, for, for baldness. So the people who are colorblind also go through the same because colorblindness is also a recessive disease. So it is carried by the mother, it is, it is contributed from the X chromosome in the form of a recessive gene coming from the mother's side. We also see the effect of the X chromosomes in case of these type of cats, calico cats or turtle shell cats. Those are the cats because they, they are made a female cats. There are actually no, uh, there are no male cats which are, uh, which are calico cats. There are some, but those are abnormal cats. Actually, they are, they are not normal males. There could be a male cat which is calico, but it is not a normal male cat. They cannot reproduce. So in, in this case, what happens is that, again, on X chromosome, these are the two alleles that control the coat color. So the color of their fur comes from a single gene. Since there are two X chromosomes in females, so when, when this, this baby, this kitten is, is uh, conceived at that time, the two chromosomes that are contributed, both is, one is contributed from the father's side, other is contributed from the mother's side. And since they have two copies of these, at the time of, uh, of their conception, one of the two genes are, uh, one of the two genes are, or one of the two chromosomes are inactivated. So since there are two of those, so one of those is, is inactivated. And when the, the body formation is taking place, when the babies are being made in the body of the mother, at that time, two different chromosomes are inactivated. Some parts of the body uh, have actually only the orange color inactivated, for example, in the black areas. And in other parts, the black gene is inactivated wherever these patches of orange are present. So the white color is because of a different gene. Only that these two genes, you know, orange and, and black color, is contributed by the same gene that has two forms. And, and that is actually normal for all females. All females that have two X chromosomes, in order to balance the two X chromosomes, because males have only one X chromosome, in order to balance the dose of the genes that are present on two X chromosomes versus X chromosome, which is only one in case of males. So males have only one X chromosome. In order to kind of balance the effect of the genes present on X chromosome, one is always inactivated one of those two X chromosomes in females is always activated, or at least one of the two genes on both of these <coughs> chromosomes is inactivated. So both of them are not producing proteins at the same time that make the proteins that give the expression in the body of this, this cat. So proteins are being made only from the black gene here. So that gives this, this, this pattern of black color here. And in this case, proteins are being made only from the other allele, which is the orange allele. So the body becomes this type of a calico pattern, which looks very nice. And some of those actually look very pretty. Uh, otherwise, they come from two normal parents, you know, that may be just stray cats somewhere. Um, so when they mate, one of those is probably a tabby, which is, you know, orange color. Other one is some black cat. So when they mate, uh, they, they both contribute for the females. They do both contribute X chromosome and one of the two X chromosome happen to be turned off 
or becomes inactivated at the time of development of this part of the body, other is inactivated at the development of this part of the body. Because this all is a gradual process that is taking place in the womb of the mother, in the uterus of, of the cat. So the same process is taking place there. And, and activation and inactivation results into that um, you nefar know, color, uh, uh, which, is, which is nicely patterned color. And in some cases, actually, it is completely shuffled because you see the patches or the shades of orange and black. And the entire body is covered with that, that far coat color, which is, you know, orange and blackish color, or you will see some shades of both of them. Um, so that is also the same thing. And that's, uh, so in case of humans, since we cannot do a lot of these type of crossing, which are controlled crossing, like, you know, we can do with plants, so it is not very easy to understand what is going on. In order to study that, uh, pedigree analysis is done. Pedigree analysis is an analysis which is done on humans as well as in some cases um, in, in, in animals like in case of dogs and cats, you know, which are very expensive. So they, if they do, uh, if they kind of maintain pedigree, you know, they will charge you a lot more. So they say this, this comes from a very good uh, family, you know, or they have a, from a good pedigree. So because they know what the parents were, what the grandparents were, and what type of features they had. So, uh, but in case of humans, it just helps us to see how things are transmitted from one generation to the other. It is usually done in those cases where people have some genetic conditions. You know, somebody has some abnormalities like color blindness. So that person will go to a geneticist or to a doctor and they say, you know, I have this color blindness. You know, can you trace it down where it came from? Whether my parents gave it to me or my, my grandparents gave it to me or, you know, my, our grand grandparents gave it to us. Or what will happen to the next generation? If I have children now, what will happen to my children? Will they have the same type of uh, genetic condition or not? Should I reproduce uh, or should I, should I do something else? So these are the questions that people ask that, uh, that inherit certain genetic diseases or certain genetic conditions. In order to understand what is going on and what are the chances that the next generations will have it, like, you know, in, so in case of hemophilia, for example, or in case of um, uh, Parkinson's, or in case of Huntington disease, in case of uh, uh, other diseases like uh, uh, more severe diseases like uh, albinism, so those are some of the uh, kind of conditions, or sickle cell anemia. So it is more important there to understand what we have genetically in our chromosomes and what are the chances that we will be able to kind of avoid giving it to our children or not. So this type of analysis is done. I'm not going to go into detail here, uh, but this, this is what the pedigree analysis is. It is done in case of humans mostly to understand the genetics involved in some of the uh, some of the genes. For example, if somebody is a carrier of a genetic disease like sickle cell anemia, so should they reproduce? You know, of course they should reproduce, but they need to be very careful in choosing their partner. So if, if they are carrier of a disease like sickle cell anemia, they should not marry to somebody who is also a carrier of sickle cell anemia. What will happen is sickle cell anemia is a recessive disease. So the chances are one of the four that, the, you know, if they have four children, one of them will have sickle cell anemia and may not, able, may not be able to survive. Others will be also carriers. There will be two that will be carriers. So one will have the sickle cell. So it will be diseased. That there will be two that are carrier and only one of those four cases will be a normal child. So even though this one is not going to survive for too long, these ones also have chances of contributing it to their children. So, and the same thing, if they don't really care who they date and who they marry to have children, then they can actually have this condition. And it could also mean, these are just probabilities, they're, they're one fourth, one fourth, and one half. So it could mean that you know, if they have three children, all three of them can actually have the condition. So it's just a probability base. So all of them can have the same disease that they are trying to avoid, or they did not get, but they will contribute to, to their next generation. 
So that is how, that is why it is important to have this type of analysis. And usually these type of tests are given to the, um, to the parents uh, who have some genetic condition running in their family. If somebody has hemophilia or sickle cell anemia uh, or any of these diseases, these tests are given to them to determine their genotype, to find out you know, what are the chances that their children will have the same kind of conditions in them. Okay. And then we also, um, we also see examples like this. What are these? These are beautiful cats, you know? Those are Siamese cats. The Siamese cats are the ones which are an example of a mutation. So genes are not the only thing. So genes or the genotype of an individual determine what can happen. But a lot of time, genotype is not enough. The genes are not the only thing which are enough. So in some cases, it is the environment which plays a role. Environment. So environment would mean temperature around you, or food that you take, or exercise that you don't do, or do. Um, so if, for example, if my father had high cholesterol level, so high cholesterol level is a condition that could be genetic, it could be a condition that is because of lack of exercise or because of lack of accumulation of some type of mutations in the body. So if I, if I know that my father had that condition, and if I start exercising, controlling my diet, and, and start taking some <laughs> medication, then I can actually avoid having the same problem that my father had, in some cases, not all the cases. There are some conditions of cholesterol, uh, you know, which is called hypercholesterolemia, in which people start to have problems when they are only five years of age. So there you cannot really do anything there because that condition cannot be changed. In other conditions, those people, some of, there are some people who have problems with cholesterol when they are in their 30s and 40s and they usually die in 30s and 40s. There is something that can be done even though they have the genes, they have the genotype, but they can change their environment to, to kind of uh, fix the problem. And the, the, that will be done with the help of some drugs, you know, legal drugs, um, and with exercise. So they can do some exercise, um, take some medication, and then control their diet. So the environment can play a role to modify the effect of the genes. So if you start exercising, if, if there is obesity in the family, you start controlling diet and you start controlling your, your exercise and pay more attention, you can do something about it. So it's not always to blame it on the genes. You cannot actually just say, well, it's, it's in, our, in our family, we can't really do anything about it. In some cases, yes, you cannot do anything about it. In other cases, genes are, you know, environment is as important as genes. So they say that for any gene to be expressed, there are two factors, genes, genotype, and environment. Both of those are equally contributed. So what they have done is actually in some cases they have taken twins. You know, they're, they're the same genotype, right? Twins are identical. They have the same genes in them. So what they have done is they, have, they actually um, found some, some twins. One of them, um, uh, after about 50 years or so, one of them actually have, had a very healthy lifestyle. So she was caring about her diet, she was caring about her, uh, about her exercise and everything. And she was you know, staying away from all those kind of uh, bad things that we usually do to dis uh, deteriorate over health. The other, uh, other of the twins, she actually had all the uh, opposite what the other was doing. They found out the one who was smoking and not exercising and not caring about the, uh, the, the diet, they look very different after 50 years, even though they had the same genes in them. So what really the other one did to herself was destroy her own environment. So environment can play a role. One of them actually was smoking for about 50 years or so, she developed cancer. The other one, was, the other one stayed healthy because she never got involved into those things. She never drank, she never smoked, and she was always into exercises, and so she lived actually a very healthy life. That means the genes are not to blame for everything. Um, so th things can be done. And so this is the effect of the genes. This is the cat, you know. So 
what happens in this case here, there is a mutation in this cat. So this, this cat is mutated. The mutation is in the genes that make the color of the fur, in this case also. So it is expressed here in the extremities where the temperature is lower as compared to the rest of the body. So in our extremities, in our fingers and tips and nose and ears, so our, our ears become actually very red very quickly whenever the temperature is high or whenever temperature is low. The, you know, it's usually first indicated with, with the color of your ears because the temp they are more temperature sensitive than the rest of the body because they are away from the body. So the same thing is true here. This gene uh, expresses this darker color uh, in the extremities of the body, the nose and face and ears and, and the, the paws and tail because it's a mutation and that mutation is expressed only at lower temperature. When the temperature of the body is high during the, uh, the summertime, the color changes there also. So it comes closer to the color of the remaining part of the body, even though it's still a little bit darker than the other, but it gets, gets closer to the other part of the body because the color code is dependent upon a gene, and that gene is temperature-dependent gene. So, that, so environment can play a role. Also, the complexion color, the body color for the body is controlled by multiple genes. So multiple genes, some people who are very fair colored, they actually have, uh, we don't have the dark genes in them. So the people who are darker skin, they have actually more genes in them. They are multiple copies of the gene in them. That's why they are darkened in color. People who are fair in color, they actually lack any of those pigments or any of those genes that make the pigments uh, that produce that color. So. Uh, so And then the people who are kind of in between, they have inherited some of those genes which are kind of darker genes and the remaining of the genes are <coughs> just kind of colorless genes in them. So they all have the genes, it just some of those genes are lacking in some because it is controlled by multiple, uh, multiple genes. Those are called polygenic traits, for example height. Height is it's just like this condition also, some people are very tall. So they have inherited many genes. And people who are very short, you know, they have not inherited all those genes. Intelligence is another one. Behavior uh, is another of those type of traits. Those are all controlled by polygenic, uh, those are called polygenic traits, meaning they are controlled by multiple genes. They are not controlled by a single, a single gene that has two alleles, but in this case, there are multiple genes. Not multiple alleles, but multiple genes. They are located in different locations of the chromosomes. So if that plays a big role um, in what is, uh, what type of uh, traits, so what type of phenotype is there. So depending on multiple genes, they may have multiple 